As we have done at PC over the years, we do not bring in outside speakers to speak to the graduates. What we do is we have our, have our outstanding senior, the 2018 outstanding senior, and the 2018 Professor of the Year speak to the graduates at this convocation. And we're going to start off today with our outstanding senior. Uh, our speaker is Janie Engelman Miles. She is from Clemson, South Carolina, and the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kevin Miles. And I'd ask Jamie to start coming up, but I ask her mom and dad and any family members who are here to please stand and be recognized also. They're right there. They're the ones that have that proud look on their face, and well, they should. Uh, Jamie is a biology major with a minor in psychology. She feels her most important achievement as PC is having the opportunity to impact other people, both academically and athletically. And she's done a pretty good job of that. She's a member of three academic honor societies, and she is, for the second year in a row, she is a big size scholar athlete from PC. So she's done that two years in a row, so she's done a pretty good job of that. Uh, she has impacted others by virtue of her involvement in all aspects of life at PC. Janie believes that the opportunity to impact others that she has been given is far more important than the service, service level, surface level things she has been blessed to be able to achieve. Her time at PC has been exemplified by our motto, while we live, we serve, and it's a great honor to present her as a 2018 Outstanding Student and welcome her to come up and speak to us. Good morning, Presbyterian College, Class of 2018, family and friends, professors and administrators. As I stand here in front of you all, I'm truly humbled to be up on this stage. Those of you who know me know that this is far outside my comfort zone. When I found out I would be giving this speech, I knew right away I did not want to waste it. I wanted to get up here and say something worth saying. The more I've thought about it, the more I've realized how inadequate I am to do that. I knew for a fact I did not want to stand up here and just say my words, because they would never be good enough to actually mean something. If I'm going to say anything worth saying, the words have to come from someone much greater than I am. That was all a long way of saying I've been doing a lot of praying, and these are the words the Lord has laid on my heart. My hope is only that he would be known today, class of 2018, as we celebrate our accomplishments and look forward to the rest of our lives. I think it is only right to start by acknowledging a few of the people who have gotten us to this point, from our professors and coaches, to the administration here at PC, from President Staten to our classmates and friends. We would not be here without any of you. And I think I speak for the class of 2018 in saying thank you. Thank you for all of your time and efforts to get us here. Thank you for the incredible opportunities and education we have received here at PC. To our parents and our families, your prayers, time, emotional support, and yes, money, have been invaluable. We love you, and we are indebted to you for all you have done. People often talk at graduations about new beginnings, about anticipating what's next, about the true beginning of our futures. All those things are great, but we are also celebrating and reflecting on the things we have done here at PC. It is good to move forward, but it is also good to take stock of where we have been, to look back on our successes and failures, to delight in the ways we have grown, to see all that we have been privileged to experience and know. These four years have given us an education, lifelong friends and memories, and an alma mater we can be proud of. People say all the time that what makes PC is the people. We may be moving on from a building, a campus, an institution, but we are not moving on from PC because the people are PC. Look around. Find the faces of your friends and all those who have supported you in your time here. Those are your people. Those are the ones who have shaped this experience and who will always share it with you. So, class of 2018, we will forever hold the memories we have made here at PC. 
We have played in or watched countless athletic events, poured over books for hours in the library or our dorm rooms. We have pulled all-nighters during exam week, climbed on top of the buildings, jumped in the fountain, probably done a few other stupid things. Remember the people and the places the Lord has given you, because none of them were an accident. If there is one thing I have learned over the years, it is the inevitability of change, that nothing is constant, nothing is certain, nothing truly lasts. You start high school, and everyone tells you how fast it will go, and you believe them, but you don't really understand. Before you know it, you're freaking out about where to go to college, and it feels like the biggest decision of your life. Then the decision is made, and everyone tells you again how it'll fly by, how it'll be the best four years of your life. And this time, you're sure you understand, but all of a sudden, you're in your cap and gown, and it is time to make actual grown-up decisions. Some of us think we have it all figured out. We have big plans, and we're following the right script to get us there. Some of us, like me, are still working on it, and that's okay. We can plan all we want, but none of us really know where we will end up. I have no doubt that the people sitting here before me will go on to do extraordinary things, to build beautiful families, and to have successful careers, but none of us know exactly where the Lord will take us. I definitely don't. All I know is that he's sovereign and that he's good. You see, I lied before when I said that nothing is constant, nothing is certain, nothing lasts. The truth is that I know of only one thing that is constant and sure and lasting, and that is the one who has placed the stars in the sky, who sent his son to die in my place, and who has the perfect path planned out for each one of us. As Matthew Smith wrote in his song titled, His Love Can Never Fail, I do not ask to see the way my feet will have to tread, but only that my soul may feed upon the living bread. Tis better far that I should walk by faith close to his side. I may not know the way I go, but oh, I know my guide. We may not know where we are going. We may not know what life will throw at us in the years to come. But the question for us, graduates of Presbyterian College, is do we know our guide? May he receive the glory wherever we go from here. God bless you all, and God bless PC. Go host. Thank you, Jamie. I think you can see why she is the outstanding senior. Uh, as Jamie sits down, it's my pleasure to introduce our 2018 Professor of the Year. Sit down, Mike. I haven't told you to get up yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had the great, Phyllis and I had the great pleasure of going with Diane and Mike and their children to the Professor of the Year Award in South Carolina a few months, I guess about two months ago. And I can assure you, we had the best professor of the year of any of the independent colleges there. And he is our 2018 professor of the year, Dr. Michael Rischbeter, professor of biology. Now you stand up. <laughs> Mike joined the PC faculty in 1987, and he teaches a variety of courses, including introductory biology, botany, biogeography, evolution, and paleontology, and has embarked, embarked with students on many trips across the world, some of which were Ecuador, the Galapagos Islands, Australia, Costa Rica. And even during that journey, he went with one of my children who graduated from here on a trip somewhere. But he, he is well loved by all students, and he does a tremendous job at PC. Something you may not know about Mike, is that he is also an avid fisherman, and he has become the faculty sponsor of our bass fishing team, which is having some great success with Mike's leadership, and they're very passionate about it. So he's involved in all aspects of life at PC. Now, Mike's already up here, because I kind of skipped over that, but I want to, right now, before he comes to the podium, I would ask his wife, Diane, and his daughters, Amy and Jenny, to stand if they're here. They better be here. There they are. Let's give them a round of applause. Not only is Mike a great 
professor here at PC and lived a great life. He has a great family, and they are a great family and a great asset to this community. So, Mike, welcome. Thanks so much. Well, I will certainly echo Janie's comments that this is far outside of my comfort zone. As uh, most of you that have had me in classes know, I do a lot of lecturing, but not a lot necessarily of speech making. So this is a, a bit of a unique experience for me. But nevertheless, before I get to my address for the graduating class of 2018, I would like to acknowledge and thank a bunch of people. First, for their hard work getting all of this together today, the provost's office, the registrar's office, the grounds crew, and public safety. They all made this magnificent event possible. Thank you so much. Let's give them all a hand. They really have done a great job. President Staten has already done this, but I want to reiterate uh, acknowledging my colleagues to my left. Um, you have worked so hard to get those of you to my right in those chairs. It is nothing short of amazing how much time and effort you put into teaching these students, and I am sure they are more than grateful and would love to give you a hand for all that you have done for them. So give them a hand, seniors, one more time. Thank you, guys. Well, there are a number of senior students I would like to acknowledge as well. First, my biology's honors research students, AJ, Allison, Haley, and Cassandra for a job well done. Second, my Bass team seniors sitting out there somewhere, Anna and Thomas. Anna, thank you for everything you have done for the team. And for those of you who may not have heard, Thomas and his fishing buddy Andrew qualified for the FLW College National Championship that will be held in the summer of 2019. So well done, that's a lot of good fishing. And then there is the final group that includes a whole bunch of students that took up residence in my office on a regular basis and kept me from getting bored and also kept me from getting my work done, I'm sure. Like Ginny and Allison and Grant and Hydea and John and Darquez, and especially during senior capstone time, Joseph and Chris and Ethan and Alexis. To all of you, I give you my heartfelt thanks for letting me be a part of your lives for these past four years. I think you have taught me as much as I have taught you and hopefully you will keep in touch as you make your way into the big world awaiting you. And last but certainly not least, I want to again thank my family sitting over there, Diane and Jenny and Amy for putting up with me and my obsession with everything PC. I have probably spent more time than I should have over here, but then again, it is what I do. It is what I guess I was meant to do, and hopefully I can repay a little of that lost time starting in the fall with our grand adventure to Disney World. So we're going to Disney World. Now on to the business of what I want to tell the graduating class of 2018. As I thought about the many speeches I've heard both here on these fabulous grounds, but also in a variety of graduations, including my daughter's high school, college, and in Jenny's case, law school commencement ceremonies, I can't say I remember a lot, or in fact, any of what was said. So for me, the best I figured I would want to accomplish is to tell a quick story or two and leave you with some advice that you may think back on from time to time. You might have wondered what in the world Zen and the Art of Bass Fishing has to do with graduation. But my title is based on a book I first read as an undergraduate student at the University of Washington back in probably 1978. I was a botany major and spent most of my semester struggling through wonderfully impossible courses like organic chemistry and physics. Along with my major courses, comparative plant morphology, plant physiology, plant taxonomy, the list goes on. So every semester I would also take an English course to take a break from the science courses. And in fact, at one point, I thought I was a pretty good writer and might just switch over and become an English major. Well, one of my English professors was brutally honest and said, basically, stick with science. <laughs> so I did, but I, didn't end up with, I did end up with an English minor, something that has been quite useful in reading and correcting all the wonderful biology capstone papers that I have read over the years. One of the English classes I happened to take was a course on, on modern avant-garde American authors and Robert Persig, who wrote the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance in 1974, certainly qualified. The title of this book was likely a modification of the German philosopher Eugen Herigl's Zen in the Art of Archery, a book in which the author describes the workings of the unconscious mind taking over motor skills, usually associated with the conscious mind as a part of his learning the uh, art of the Japanese bow. And in this work, he observed that, quote, the archer ceases to be conscious of himself as the one who is gauged in hitting the bullseye, which confronts him. This state of unconscious is realized only when, completely empty and rid of the self, he becomes one with a perfecting of his technical skill, though there is in it something of a quite different order which, he cannot, be, which cannot be attained by any progressive study of the art." Unquote. 
in another time way back when, when I was actually a pretty good guitar player, having been part of the famous garage band Robert Fishburne and the Fish, yes, I was a fish, I had an old Fender Strat plugged into a way overpowered high watt amp that allowed sounds to be made with subtle moves on the strings that were never taught in any gu guitar class I ever took. It was a relationship between an overdriven two-powered two amp and the pickups on the Fender along with knowing the fretboard really well, intuitively I would say, that I developed without really thinking too much about. Trying to get back into guitar these days has been frustrating for, for just this reason. I have lost that connection that I never really learned to begin with. Well, when I bought that book way back in 1978 and looked at the cover, I thought it might have something to do with religion or philosophy, but the motorcycle part had me baffled. After reading the book, and it is one that I really recommend you read, in fact, Forbes magazine just published an article called Why Every Entrepreneur Should Read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, so it's still relevant today. You realize that it's not really about Zen or motorcycle maintenance, as Persig himself states in various interviews and in the newest 25th anniversary edition that now sits beside my chair at home. What it is about, at least as much as I've been able to discern, is the author's obsession with his philosophical search for the meaning of quality, which is a concept he basically says is impossible to quantify, but you know it when you see it. But his search for quality, which also turns out to be a search for himself as he is taking this motorcycle trip with his son from Minnesota to Northern California, is also about understanding the tension in very broad terms between the rationality of science in the more romantic or Zen view of life, the being in the moment, the trying to let your mind analyze complex ideas without being tied in too directly with the facts and allowing other parts of your brain to help solve complex or even simple problems. It is why I might be working on my 1969 Camaro and be totally flummoxed by a problem I can't solve, and then Diane walks up with very little automotive mechanical training and says, I wonder why they would have put a wire over there like that, which in fact I did and forgot about and didn't track it back because I was too deep into the process and just needed another set of eyes that were looking from a totally different perspective. So the wire gets plugged into the right place and the car starts and runs like a champ. The message for me from the Zen part of the title of the book in this speech and the message for you is that I think sometimes you need to step back and rethink what you are doing at times. Look at it from a different perspective, and maybe you will find the solution to that particular problem. I've used that approach many times, not enough sadly, when I have hit a dead end. I just simply stop and maybe pour another cup of coffee and let the problem sit around for a little bit. The solution often comes in those moments of repose. Now to the art of bass fishing. It's hard to describe how one becomes obsessed with fishing to a person that does not fish. For those of you who do fish, you know what I mean. It may, be that with, it may be that way with any obsession, like gardening or being a lifelong obsessed Moody Blues fan, which many of you know I am, having been in my office and heard the music. In the days when I was a bass master, and I put that in quotes, chasing bass all over Lake Greenwood, Lake Hartwood, and Lake Murray, I might go all day and catch one fish and then not even keep it. I would get back to the launch site and people wanted to know how I did or see, my, see the fish in my live well and there was really nothing there. Especially my early years here in South Carolina, I really had no clue how to catch largemouth bass. And that was troubling for me because before that point, I felt like I could catch fish anywhere, and had. From my early days catching trout, steelhead, and salmon in Washington State, to my time catching crappie and bluegill in Illinois with my father-in-law, to catching smallmouth bass, walleyes, and northern pike up in New York with my dad. This largemouth bass thing was an enigma to me, so I got real scientific with it, obsessed with it. And I did pretty good at it, and I got pretty good at it. I won a few minor tournaments here and there, but it became something other than what fishing had always been for me, so I got out of it. Sold my bass boat, put away my bass-only boxes of gear and poles and all of it, and bought a little John boat and refocused on crappie. And I have probably caught more bass fishing for crappie than I ever did fishing for bass, there's no doubt about it. But what has become more important to me is not the catching of fish but on actually enjoying being outdoors and being away from everybody and everything, to really appreciate the incredible beauty in nature and just take a deep breath and relax. If you could see me driving out of town with my boat in tow and cup of coffee in hand, the Moody Blues playing on my radio, you would see a huge smile on my face. And what I'm thinking about is not only whether the fish will be biting or not, but what a great day I have ahead of me. No cell phones, well, I don't really have a cell phone anyway, no watch, Really no care in the world. Being out on the water like this is the closest I have ever felt to finding what God really means to me. 
and continuing to build this connection is something I really look forward to in the years to come. Fishing is the outlet for me that lets me get away from all of the pressures that accompany what I usually do on a daily basis. I certainly miss all that goes along with fishing during the weeks and months I am away from the water. So, my hope for you, graduating class of 2018, is that you will find a special place like I have found. Whether it be on a lake or river, maybe a hiking trail, your backyard, any place that you can disconnect for a little while from all of the technology and pressures that you will have to deal with on a regular basis. And let your mind relax a bit. It's an amazing feeling. One I hope you guys will have the chance to experience once in a while as you make your way through graduate schools and professional schools and new jobs and new places. You are all in for some really big changes in your lives, as I'm sure you know. PC has been a great place to learn a whole bunch of things about life and about yourselves, but you are at the beginning of a long road. There's much, much more to learn about and experience, more than you can imagine. One thing that will continue to amaze you, I'm sure, is how fast time flies by. You have just finished four years of college, which I imagine is somewhat of a surprise to you, as much as it is to me that I have just finished my 31st year here at PC. Take the time to enjoy the journey, my friends. And don't forget that you always have a place to come back to. PC will always be your home. Thank you so much, and let's get on to the graduation. <laughs>